I'm playing Moss for the first time. Um, just looking at the controls here. Invade, attack, jump. Recenter. Um, hmm. I'm trying to recenter. It doesn't seem to want to center. Oh well, whatever. Um, cool. So let's jump in. Oh wow. Okay. Oh yeah, this is getting immersive from the beginning. I'm used to playing Tetris uh, lately, which is not as immersive as this. Oh, okay. It wants me to. Ooh, look! It has like a trail. I get like super distracted by. <laughs> By this stuff in VR when I first start a game. Uh, so this is my first time playing Moss. I've heard a lot about it. Um, I follow one of the animators, or maybe the only animator of... Uh... Did I grab it? Wow. Um, I follow the animator on uh, Vimeo and social. I've been, I've been seeing the progress of the animations. And uh, so I'm super curious to see see the character, the little mouse character, actually being animated in game. Has come at last, dear reader. While we began this tale long ago, we hope it is yours to finish. But this story is not yours alone. No, it is tied to another, and the journey you take together could change the fate of both our worlds. Shall we begin? They called it the Cinder Night. What came from those dark, starless skies would change the world. It seems kind of out of focus for me. The peace that had set I don't think it's the, the headset. Was broken by an un the texture quality is kind of low. And that night, the animals nearly met their end. First, they killed the king. A winged creature broke from the shadows and plucked him from his royal bedchamber high atop the tallest tower. Next, oh. the king's guard fought bravely, but the castle soon pulsed with the arcane's evil. Every room was gutted, every statue, tapestry, and adornment hexed, but the glass was never found. Even the reclusive sprites set aside their differences on that faded night. They sent a great champion, empowered by their own glass relic, to challenge the serpent and its steel army. Meanwhile, Sir Argus, commander of the King's Guard, led the survivors west through a temple long abandoned by their ancestors and far away from their newly risen enemies. It was an arduous escape. Finally, after passage beneath the impassable mire, they found refuge in a clearing hidden safely in the trees. Argus charged back to join the sprite champion at the mire's edge. Together, they fought back the arcane and sealed the temple passage that led to the clearing. But the champion was gravely injured. Clutching his glass, he retreated deep into the forest where he drew his last breath. A large tree grew upon him. It stood many years in watchful duty, safeguarding the glass and awaiting its next hero. Ooh, that's bright. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, that cool. Hero, albeit an unlikely one, did arrive at a time she'd be needed most.
Oh man, this is already Without so adorable. Beyond the edge of the clearing, dusk was creeping in, but she wondered what she might find if she went just a little farther. She was not exactly sure what she roused, but she felt no danger from the being silently peering down at her. Quill had to hurry. The village gates would soon close and night would follow. Oh, now I got control of him. Or her. I can't tell if the control actually is useful. Huh. Oh, I guess I can interact with stuff. Nice. Just kind of checking out the move set here. It's got a little, it's pretty responsive, but um, it's a little jerky getting in and out of the idle, maybe. Could use like a little more blend, maybe. Um, I really like the side, how he leans into turns. It's super cool. The tail... I mean, doing tail stuff in a move set must be, it looks really good. I don't know how they're doing this because it's, it's pretty smooth. I'm surprised it's not more jagged. I bet they spent a ton of time on that. Um, interesting. So I didn't even have to like jump on that, I guess, because that rock, there must be like a con collision geometry there that kind of makes it into a ramp. Um... I totally forget what the controls are now. Oh. Oh, wow. This, <laughs> the noises, uh, the sound design is really good. I love that you can interact with the environment like this. What does this mean? I don't know why. Like I'm, tr I'm. I can't tell what this means or what's what's happening here. Um. Oh, we gotta go that way. <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> that's great. He does go through the ground a little bit there, but I think it's probably because it's on a slope. Um, how do I follow him with... Oh, I guess I don't. Okay. Whoa. Uh, 
Oh, this is great. I love these environments too. The lighting is really nice. It's all soft and kind of glowy. I wonder what that trophy's about. So what did I do now? Interesting, okay. Now oh, I gotta, okay. That I love, I kinda just wanna keep doing stuff like this. Cause the animation looks so good. so smooth it gets a little there's like a little bit of a pop right there and, and he freezes man if it, I wish I could just have like a little more overlap or something but like it's so adorable and uh, smooth like with the tail and everything um, yeah it looks really good I wonder Oh, there it goes. Ow, oh, man. I meant to... I didn't want that. Because I wanted to see how these movesets work when the sword is put away. I think it's just like a timed thing for him to like sheath the sword back. There he goes. Yeah. I think it's interesting too, like, if he's at a certain angle, he'll look at me. This is very, um, Studio Ghibli kind of aesthetic. Night, her uncle often warned, was when danger was most present. But Quill preferred the stories of the magical creatures that woke to protect the forest. There's a scroll over there. That again? I guess maybe I did. Yeah. I think that these gameplay mechanics are really nice. Like that you interact and you kind of like, you feel like you're uh, kind of a team, even though you're also controlling the character. And the fact that he keeps, he looks at. Oh, there's a little bit of a collision thing. Um, the fact that he's look, he looks at you. Also kind of helps that connection. What does that mean? So far, I'm, I'm really impressed. The animation really good. I think it's, maybe it's just my headset. The periphery is kind of or not even. It's like it seems like it's out of focus a little bit. Kind of just like taking it all in.
Oh, interesting. They won't let me go back up. Oh, here we go. I'm just really curious what this what this means, really. Like if I grab him, it's almost. It seems like I'm like petting him or something. I can't really tell what the point of that is. Maybe it helps with his health or something later on. I don't know. Oh, actually, I wanted to go check out that cart. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. I feel like I'm like destroying things I shouldn't be destroying, but it's rewarding me anyways. And there's no like heads up display. I don't know what that is, what I'm collecting. And like what I'm gonna be able to use it for. Oh, there's another scroll. I kind of forget that I can interact with stuff like this. It's, yeah, and it's interesting, like a fall like that doesn't hurt him either. I'm trying to hit that lantern with my sword, but... Oh, interesting, you can see him behind things. Huh. Oh, wow, I didn't even look around. This is super cool. Oh, man. I really like this. I kind of just want to hang out here. Man, this is just so charming. Fishing line. Ah, oh, why can't I go up there? Huh. Man, it's just super cool. I, I, it's just so charming. I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> I'm just like taking it all in. It's a little bummer. You're kind of limited on where you can go. I can't go. Can't go this way. I feel like there's some significance with these lanterns, like they're like little checkpoints or something. Work. 
Oh, we gotta go up there and then I gotta stop it, maybe. Hmm. Oh wait, maybe that's how I get up there. Dang it. <laughs> I was trying to jump on that ledge. I feel like if I get that scroll, I'm going to have to go... Oh no, I guess I can go maybe up that way. The music is really nice too. Oh, I can't go any further. I mean, just that, that, that animation is so smooth. Yeah, I mean, I really have no critiques on the, the animation is like, it looks really good, especially this stuff. I mean, like I said, it's a little too responsive, maybe like how it pops if you like abort kind of a move. Um, a little it can look a little jerky like uh, after you abort but I mean that's you know it's a trade-off between like being responsive and um, and not thanks to her new friend Bill had saved priceless grains from the hourglass what Priceless grains from the hourglass. Time? Something about time? I don't understand. Ooh, a squirrel. She raced to the door of the cottage she shared with her uncle. Hoping once he saw her discovery, he'd lose himself in tales of its legend. Ooh, I don't I'm not a fan of the bright transitions here in VR. Like in any game. Uncle Argus was watching the evening light dim when Quill burst through the front door of their cottage. Uncle, Uncle, there's something you have to see. Out past the bell again, he scolded. Quill, I've told you countless times. I know, Quill replied, crestfallen. I didn't mean to worry you, but I found something strange and magical. Quill's hands trembled as she showed him the glass. Oh, she, okay. What is it? She asked. A look of panic spilled over her uncle's stoic exterior. Where did you find this? Roared Uncle Argus. Oh, there's a super subtle so light change when they switch from the left page to the right page I hadn't noticed before. And then it just dimmed. I feel like they could uh, amplify that because it's really, it's really subtle. Just west of the clearing, she explained. And as soon as I picked it up, something started helping me. Uncle Argus followed her motion. A reader. With you, here, right now? Quill, what you found is very powerful and very dangerous, he said with great concern. If I could take this burden from you, I would. But this reader has chosen. 
It has a very Lord of the Rings kind of vibe. Even with the moon full and bright, I must go right away. Quill pressed. Where are you going? I can help. We can help. No, he snapped. They'll find you and tear you apart. I have to go alone. It is for your own safety and for everyone here in the clearing. His long, heartfelt hug told her he was heading for danger. I totally spaced out. I, I, I missed uh, where he was I'll going. Be back before midnight. Until I return, I need your word you will not leave the clearing with that glass. Promise me, Quill. I promise, she said reluctantly, wondering where her uncle was going so deep. Oh, I guess they never said. Okay. Oh, man, the bright transitions. <laughs> it's just so bright when you're in VR, and that's, you can't, you know, it's just envelopes your entire vision I'm just really not a fan of bright bright whiting out the screen the VR this is so charming man this is just like Bring the glass. Oh, does that? Or she was talking about like the gym. Quill called out, "Hey, Starthing, wait!" Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, there's something about the. Like, I can't get, like, stuff isn't in focus. I'm kind of curious to look back at this stream, because, like, that is super out of focus. I can't tell if it's a headset. I'm trying to adjust it right now, and uh, it's not affecting it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just slightly off. Um, focus I can't I can't really tell if it's a resolution issue or, or what but um yeah it's just barely barely not sharp enough Quill had never met a starving in campfire stories they often meddled in the lives of mortals and when they appeared mischief followed yeah, I have a feeling this is a bad idea, but I don't think I have a choice here. I really like just that small stuff, you know. Oh, there's another scroll. Um, oh, man. The, there was like a little flap in the headset. Hit my eyeball. Um, you know, I really Passage like... Passage through the eastern gate was strictly forbidden. But despite her promise... Quill knew in her heart that Uncle Argus needed her.
Quill demanded answers. Starving, you can't just barge in here with your riddles. Where is he? What do you know? Um, I was going to say, I really like being able to <laughs> just like the small stuff, like break those sticks. Um, any kind of interactivity like that's always great. Trouble your uncle's heading for is the kind only you and that silent giant up there can get him out of. Here we go. I was going to say. Man, this is super cool. <laughs> I, love, I love gameplay like this. This is super fun. Okay, let's see. I need to pull this one back. Probably going to need this one back at some point. The only thing I'd, I'd say is, like, because I'm not in a chair, I'm um, sitting in my bed right now, the... It's kind of... Sometimes I can't I can't bring the controller down further than this um, because that's where the mattress is, and so I'm assuming the gameplay is thinking that I'm in a chair and I can go past my knees or something. Um, but because I'm in a bed, I can't go lower than this. This is the my floor basically. So that's one kind of a annoying thing. But so far it's not been that big of a deal. straight ooh man that feels weird in my eyeball <laughs> like that sensation my brain is telling me something's touching me but it's not oh gosh dang it oh my gosh <laughs> it's super annoying now things that were fun become tedious with one small mistake like that I feel like the, there could be maybe a cooler... Now, all the other animations are super cool, and this one's kind of... less unique or something, maybe? I don't know what I'm expecting, but I feel like, you know, the hands are pretty stationary. Um, well, and, and take that back, they're not really stationary, they're, they kind of, like, slip. I don't know, there's something about this one I feel like they maybe could have been plus a little bit, or... I'm sure there's constraints um, on how that design works to to fit on an edge and the IK system and all that stuff. But this way, kid. Urge the starting, and don't forget to tuck your ears in. See, this is the transitions I like. Dark. <clears throat> I mean, there's really no point to doing the bright transitions. These textures are great. I love the timing of all this too. Like it gives you time to like notice it, focus on it, take it in. Then the action happens. Like all uh, how the timing of that stuff is orchestrated is done really well. Um, you know, I've noticed that a couple. You know, a, a few kind of levels ago too. Like when you transition between levels, they kind of give you a moment to get your bearings. So. That by the time you've gotten your bearings, you can focus on what you need to be focusing on.
I hope I get a trophy for um, all the sticks I'm breaking. Ooh, I can affect the water. But again, this is like the mattress, so that's as far as far down as it goes. I wish I had a little more explanation on what the glittery stuff is. Oh god, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I didn't even notice there's just deer here. Wow. Um, is that good or bad? Is it gonna like attack me? Can I swim? I don't know if It almost looks like there's something under the water here. Oh, I can pull this up. Oh man, see now this is going to be a problem. Okay, got it. Um, because this is right at the the mattress I'm sitting on level. <laughs> Just can barely get it. Man, I really like that the deer reveal and all that. I mean. Like, these little surprises just add up, you know, um, and really kind of keep you wanting to play because you don't know what the next surprise might be. And it's just all so charming. You kind of just want to keep watching it unfold like that. I wonder why there's a... I wonder if I go down here if there's a, like, a hidden one or something. Doesn't seem like it. The so I like how the sounds have changed now too from um Oh yeah, here we go. From Ooh. That animation's a little jerky how <laughs> it raised its head up. Um, but I like how the, the, oh wow, there's the moon, yeah. But, uh, yeah, wait, did he just wave at the deer? <laughs> I'm kind of waiting to see if he's going to wave at him again. Watch, watch the deer's head. Burnk. It just hits a wall right there. <clears throat> it kind of feels animatronic-y. And, you know, the animation on, the, on Moss is so good that that really stands out. Burnk. It just hits that wall. Um, you know, I just feel like that would have taken, like, Two more minutes to just kind of ease that in a little bit. And it almost looks like there's only one joint there, maybe. Like that rig looks super simple. The um the neck almost looks like it's caving in on itself, maybe. Yeah, it looks like it's really low poly, super simple. Um but yeah, was, with that being such a large object visually in the scene, I would think, you know, you're going to notice that stuff even more because it is so big. And I would just like to see, because look at all this animation on Moss. is so good. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, that's like a super small. Much respect for, for this game already. Like, it's just super appealing, super, super appealing. Um, I 
Now am I supposed to get to that thing? I guess I need to get up on this. I wonder if I can jump over. <laughs> yeah, it's like definitely the closer I get, the more out of focus it gets. So I'm really curious to see this played back on um, on the stream to see if oh dang it to see if uh, that's happening in the capture of, of Twitch as well or it's if it's um, an issue just with my uh, headset. Uh oh, there's his grandfather. I keep saying he. Just on the other side. Oh my god. The starving assured her. I just. <laughs> Good chance your uncle's still there. I just laid on the. <laughs> I just leaned back on the volume setting. <laughs> I don't know if that captures the volume. Um, the volume uh, symbol popping up on the screen, but I leaned back. I thought that was happening automatically and then realized I was leaning on it. And I think I have an older headset because um, we have one at work and um, the volume isn't on the cord and that's, and maybe that's why they updated that because people are leaning back on the volume. Um, oh, okay, now this is an IGC, I, the game took over. Yeah, and like I say, I really like these kind of longer transitions, so you can can, Did you hear that? can kind of get your bearing before gameplay starts I again. In these parts. I can't be seen with you. I'll catch up with you later. Just don't go and die on me. So I guess we get, made it through the night, and now. Um, the sun's coming out. Uh, okay. I didn't even tell it to move forward. Yeah, see, I knew this would come in handy. Um, so I guess they did that intentionally, kind of like tutorialize the health thing because I didn't tell it to go across this thing. It just initiated an IG um, in-game cinematic. I mean look at that tail on that run cycle and all the overlap. I, th I feel like there could be maybe a little more ear stuff but they feel p pretty stiff which is maybe what they're going for but that tail is just so, so nice. Um, let's see. Can I? Oh wait, what's this? I can touch that. Yeah, it's I, I not to harp on this, but like the focus thing. So this statue isn't really in focus, but the vines behind it are, which makes me feel like it's a, not a headset issue. That this is like an intentional depth of field setting that seems bizarre to to impose on a game that is miniaturized. 
and that puts your headset right in the middle of the environment. Um, but I guess it's like more physically accurate but i but like i should be able to if something in reality was actually that close to my face i should be able to focus on it um so that doesn't make a ton of sense to me i don't know if it's a limitation of um you know the game engine or what what that's originating from but that would definitely be a critique i have or there would, it'd be nice if that was uh, improved a little bit. Ooh, there's another scroll. Oh god, I forgot that thing was right there. I'll move it. Can I move that back? Oh, I can't grab it anymore. Oh god. Can I not jump up here? Oh, there we go. Wait, where does this go? Oh god, I keep forgetting that thing is there. <laughs> Man, I have a feeling I'm not going to make this jump. Nice. I kind of want to be on the lookout for wildlife again because that deer really snuck up on me. Oh, what in the world? What in the world? Oh! Oh, wow. We can even do teamwork with my... Oh, gosh. With my orb. Oh no! I, I don't know if I'm doing that right. Man, there's more? And they seem like they're about to shoot something. Oh. I like the little glow. Oh, wow. And the jump. I like the little glow in his eyes, too. I guess I won't do it now because he's... Or, I keep saying he... That she's not injured. Um, but next time, notice that there's actually... When I heal her, there's a little glow in her eyes that happens. That's right. really like those small touches that especially in like a big environment like this that they would you know add those little details um, a whisper echoed through the trees fought like someone who has stolen our champion's power uh, not a fan of these transitions a small yet fantastical band of sprites emerged surrounding quill I'm Veda, root seer of the mire, and you have crossed into our domain. She sized up Quill with a rueful gaze, then turned her attention upward. I sense you there too. I have not felt the presence of such a promising reader in some time. A youthful warrior marched forward. Rootseer, I'm prepared to honor our great champion's legacy. Rodent, give us our glass. 
Wait, what? I'm about to I'm about to have to fight these guys. Quill stepped closer. Where is my uncle? If you've hurt him, silence! Theta thundered back. It was Argus who summoned us here, and now I see why. Young one, I'm afraid the trees hum of attack. Your uncle's been taken to the castle of your ancestors. Quill's knees buckled as Veda continued. Argus put himself at great risk calling for us. Your uncle once took a solemn oath to protect the glass of your fallen king. He is the only one left who knows where it's been hidden. The arcane have long sought to wrest that knowledge from him. And do you dare to cross into the mire with our glass? Sarfog will soon burn through this forest looking to tear you and your reader apart. Unless, of course, you find them first what's this about because there there's these pieces that keep getting added and there's no explanation about that like the last time we were here there weren't this many take these weapons made for the mighty champion who died so that your people could live Quill felt its otherworldly power course through her Find your uncle twofold before the serpent and its masters break him. The warrior fumed. Hourglass with her? Rootseer, she's minuscule. Come now, the reader has chosen its hero. We must let their story unfold. Veda replied with a frost of finality and vanished into the shadows of the mire. Oh man, <laughs> it's just so unnecessary. Do a dark transition. I mean, I have to close my eyes anyways when that happens. So I got a sweet new weapon. Ooh, it has like a little glowy trail to it too. Um, cool. I think this is a good first run at this game. Really enjoy it. Would highly recommend it just based off this first playing. <clears throat> Animation's super good. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing this some more. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but my name is Lucas. I teach at digitalcreatorschool.com. Uh, if you want to learn about animation and 3D and modeling and After Effects and all that kind of fun stuff and become a one-person studio... Uh, you can learn from all my hours of courses on digitalcreatorschool.com. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next stream or in class at, uh, at the website. Thanks for watching.